Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to go through how we can take a displace map from uh, ZBrush and set this all up in Blender in a fairly co in a in a fairly easy and production friendly workflow. Before you get started with any anything here, you need to make sure that you have a model with a decent topology, subdivision levels, and that you have UVs on your model. If you don't have UVs, then this is not going to work. And if you don't have topology, then this also is not really going to work. So with that said, we now have a model here which has everything here. It has nice UVs, it has topology, and has a lot of subdivision levels. So what we want, we want to recreate this in Blender but using a low res cage like this. So the way we do this is we use uh, we use a uh, plugin here called Multimap Exporter. This is a really powerful plugin and has saved our lives so much in production throughout the years. We just click uh, Multimap Exporter and then we click Displacement. Now we're going to get a displacement map here and nothing else. Here you set the um, you set the resolution of your map. In this case, we're going to be just sticking with the we're going to sticking with a 4K map just to really get a lot of resolution. You can also set it to subtools. That is if you have additional subtools. Let's say you have some armor or some ice or something. In this case, we don't have that. Then we have export options. And under here, we have uh, a displaced map. Oh, before we go into that, we also have map border. This is how much the map is going to bleed outside of the ma actual map border. We set this all the way to 16 and make sure that flip V is enabled. This is going to flip our map because ZBrush internally works with everything being flipped. Now we have uh, names, uh, file names as well. This is only important for when it comes to UV tile ID format. By default, this doesn't really matter in Blender, but if you are using UDIMS in Blender, which is coming very soon or might exist depending on when you're watching this video, we just click this a few times, so this is set to UDIMS. Now you're going to get correct naming on your maps. Then we go under our actual displacement map settings here, and subdivision level is what level is it going to generate from. So if, you ex if you're exporting out level 2, you're going to generate this from, from level 2. We're exporting out level 1, so we are going to set this to level 1. Yeah, so this is just the subdivision level of your, your subtool in ZBrush. It can be a little confusing to get your head around in the beginning, but it's like this is the, the mesh is effectively we'll be applying our maps to in Blender. Yeah, so now it's generated from this to this level. If you set it to something like 4, now it's going to generate from this level to this level, where there is basically no difference, which is fantastic if you want to generate something like a bump map, or if you really want a cavity map or something, on, which you can use for masking and texturing. And then we have adaptive. Don't touch adaptive. This is just a huge <laughs> waste of time. And if anyone tells you to use it, just don't. Trust us. We've 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 done so much research uh, for this for films. Whenever we've been working in production. This is like this is like the production tested workflow that we've come up with for ZBrush. Um, so this is like the default way to, to set it up. Same with this one as well, DP Subpix. This is also lying to you where it's saying higher values is uh, better quality. It's not. It will just, just subdivide your model additionally. It is telling the truth though about the slower generation. That is true. That is very true. So if you have a 10 million poly version and you set this to one, now it's going to generate 40 million polys. And... 260 million polys and so on and so forth. The problem is you don't have resolution for that. Like you don't actually have your mesh subdivided to that level, so it doesn't actually add anything else. We can also enable smooth UVs. This is uh, this is preferred to to enable when it comes to UV smoothing in general. That is a whole different topic which we're not going to get into here. Mid value is set to 0.5, but default Blender is using 0.5, so we're just sticking that to this just to make it a bit easier. We can also enable three channels. This doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it, it's just nice to have on. So if you want to see your map in something like Photoshop or Nuke, it's easier to see what's going on. Then we enable 32-bit and EXR. This is absolutely essential. If your map is not 32-bit, then it's not going to work. This is this bakes in the scale and just makes it makes it so that you can just plug and play the map. If it's not set to EXR, it's going to export out as a 32-bit TIFF map, which is is fine. Uh, EXR is just a better format for this, but as a little little note here, if you're using merge maps with EXR, that's not going to work. So if you have to use merge maps at some point, make sure that EXR is set off. 
And one thing to keep in mind here, which Hennings just mentioned about the 32-bit, is that it takes scale into account. So it's very important that the model that you export from Blender into ZBrush or vice versa are exactly the same size. Otherwise, you'll have funky results with your displacement maps. Yeah, please don't scale your model in Blender afterwards. Then it's not going to work properly. And that's really it for the setup. Now, I just recommend that you take a screenshot of this just so you keep this for future reference. And um, then we can hit the create all maps and we're gonna create some nice maps. And this timer here is just <laughs> lying and it's not based on- completely arbitrary. <laughs> it's completely arbitrary. <laughs> now we can just open up our, we can just open up our map here or open up uh, where we saved it to. And we can see we have a map now which includes the, the which includes displacement map and it's 4K and it's 1001. Now I always rename this right away. So I'm gonna call this uh, this, 1001 just so it's super clean you can also name it like character like the character name and that but at least now we have now we have this here yeah and the 1001 is just for our udims even though blender doesn't support it right now uh, that's how the udim naming would, would look like yeah and it will support it very soon and then we take our model here and we export this out out of uh, out of zbrush <laughs> and then we just put this in into here and now we go into blender and we export or import this under file and uh, import. And we set this to OBJ as we can just export it out in OBJ. And then we just go, go to the location where we put it. And now you can see we have our, an OBJ right here. We click import. And now we import our model. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So now you can see we have a nice model here. Uh, I'm putting this under a geometry collection right away just so I have, just so I have this under control. And then I'll just name, rename this to head. Now in Blender, it's really easy to set up the displacement map. We are first just going to be adding a subdivision modifier. Hit control one, two, or three, just so we can set up different um, resolutions here. So control, control two is just going to set up one with two subdivision levels right here. We right click on a model as well, just to set this to smoothing. This, that's just going to smooth our normals. Depends on what you want. For characters, I prefer to set this to smooth, but if you're doing something like environments, you might want to set this to flat, as you can just squeeze out a little bit more crispness from it. Yeah, that's generally what I find is that, especially when you're working with rocky surfaces, having it set to flat just gives you... It's like it, it's almost a little bit of like cheating. You have a sharpness filter on it. It just gets that extra bit of crispness. What's cool about this modifier here is that we can have render resolution and viewport resolutions. So you can have it be really light in the viewport and be really heavy in the render. For now, we're just gonna set it to two and two. And then we are gonna go under deform and then we're gonna be adding a displace modifier. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for coming to our TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> so now obviously nothing is working and it's just, it's, just, uh, it's just adding a lot of displacement on each point here. So what we need to do is we need to add a texture map to this. If you go into texture, click new, and now we can uh, add a texture map to it. It's getting worse and worse. Just getting worse and worse. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is we need to change the texture coordinates from local to UV. This tells it to actually use the UV map on our model. And then we go to our um, texture down here. And now we can import, we can add the texture we just added to it. Here you see, we have this 1001. And there you go, right, right there, plug and play, and this works. There is one more thing we are gonna have to do. This isn't necessary for this, this specific piece here, but if your scale is really high, you're gonna have values above one and below zero. And by default, Blender is gonna be clamping your result. So right now, this is not a problem. For this model, it's perfectly fine because the scale is so small, but you might have to go down and disable clamp as well. Again, no, no difference here, but we tested it before where you have giant characters and you're gonna be seeing a lot of artifacts here. So in general, it might be a good idea to disable clamp. Then we go into our modifier system and now we can set the viewport resolution just up and down so we can just see more and less details. So the higher the subdivision count, obviously the more details you're gonna see, but also the, the heavier the render is gonna be. Yeah, and it's pretty, pretty easy to figure out if you wanna do it in your render depending on like what was your subdivision level in ZBrush. So I think for this one, it might've been five or six. I can't yeah, remember six exactly. Six subdivision levels there. 
So you would probably want to sub by the six times to get the full range of, of details into your model. So that will be for the rendering. <laughs> otherwise it's going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, not for the viewport. <laughs> but you can set to something like one and two. The advantage of doing this as modifiers is that this is going to work perfectly fine with Eevee as well. Uh, doing this in a shader with Eevee is not supported, and I'm not even sure if it is going to be supported. So with Cycles this is um, with cycles and Eevee, this is now fully supported. So we can just go into our rendering tab here. Okay, so now we can just see what this looks like in the render. It is glor gloriously pink because it uses the default material. We can just get rid of that, and we can assign a new material to it. Set the roughness a bit down, set the color just a bit down so we can ease more easily see what's going on. And now you can see the displacement is uh, is working really well right here. Now it's still not rendering because this technically is a viewport. So let's just do a quick render of here, this as well. All right, so this is what our render looks like now with the five subdivision levels. And you can see that it's really nice and crisp and we have essentially all the details we have from ZBrush. Now you could also add another subdivision level to really get everything, but that's just gonna take a bit too long for us right now. So yeah, that's that's it for um, adding, uh, for add, going between Blender and ZBrush when it comes to display maps. Incredibly easy to set up when it comes to the Blender side of it. We add a subdivision modifier to it. Then we add a displacement modifier. We just plug in our texture. We disable clamping. We set texture coordinates to UVs. And you use the settings in ZBrush, which you hopefully took a screenshot of in in the ZBrush part. Otherwise, there's no way to go back in the video. There is, unfortunately. <laughs> this video is burnt now, so... <laughs>